Hi, we're here with a ViewSonic ViewPad 10 on which we've been asked to upgrade the SSD uh, also the RAM and add 3G functionality too because uh, these devices generally come with 1 gig of RAM and a 16 gig SSD and uh, without 3G yet yeah, customers will notice that there's a 3G card SIM slot on the top there now we've already made our way into the device and just give you an indication of how that was achieved there is four along the top and four along the bottom screws holding the metal back casing to the uh, front housing and they are all covered with little uh, plastic stoppers uh, see if the camera will focus on that and essentially what you need to do is lift those out uh, we would just do that with uh, something like a very very fine tipped screwdriver to lift those out and then use a a Phillips screwdriver to take out the eight screws. They're not put in by machine. The casing isn't uh, firm enough to, to take any strong pressure, so the screws should come out pretty easy. And then put your eight screws aside. The back then will be uh, will no longer be secured, but it is clipped in all the way around. So you'll need to find a point somewhere where you can get uh, probably a fingernail or something similar uh, in between the case and the housing, and then just pull the whole thing apart like so and you'll be inside uh, just point you around the layout inside uh, all of the circuitry is over on this side on the right battery on the left uh, these are the buttons over on the right hand side of the device and indicator lights at the top you've got two speakers you've got two antennas for Wi-Fi and there's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card uh, fan of course this area here is where the SSD would be and this is the mini PCIe slot uh, for the 3G card which we've already put into into this model um, in fact we've already started working on this so here is the 3G antenna that is custom made for this device which we put in it's not in there by default and you see how that fits in the corner there so this whole green area from here below my thumb to where the pen is just by the side of the speaker is the 3G antenna and the wire for that routes along here behind the uh, SATA connector and into the, uh, the 3G card terminal uh, putting in the 3G card is fairly straightforward. You will have to remove the power connector from the motherboard here in order to do that. Uh, also on these models we find that uh, for some reason the hardware frequently disables the power on the 3G card um, and sometimes won't, uh, won't re-enable it. Um, Windows would report that you need to press the uh, press the button to turn the 3G function on or off, which can usually be achieved with a long press of one of the buttons at the front, but it's often fiddly. To compensate for that, on the back of the PCIe card, we usually cover, I believe it's pin 22, which would be the second pin in from the middle key. Uh, and by covering that, uh, it removes the operating system's ability to power off the card and therefore the 3G card uh, doesn't get into that state and remains on. So the 3G card's already been taped, that pin inserted, antenna uh, connected. And the SATA drive, uh, here it is, the 16 gig SSD, uh, they usually call this a slim SATA, uh, standard SATA connection. Uh, but obviously very very small module uh, has come out of there. Just to give you an idea of the size of that that's a normal laptop drive, not a normal PC drive but a normal laptop two and a half inch drive so obviously there's never going to be enough room in there for one of those that's why they take one of these modules. So that module has been taken out there were screws at both of these two corners and this is going to be replaced with a 64 gig SSD so from 16 to 64 is, uh, is a pretty impressive change the camera focus on that there we are 64 gig okay before we put that in we also need to change the RAM on this and that really can't be done uh, or can't be done easily without taking out the SSD 
Now the RAM unfortunately is on the back side of this board, round about where the pen is pointing now, and we needed to remove um, four screws, one here, one here at this corner, one at this bottom corner, and one here in the middle. And these screws are often covered with tape, so you need to be very careful in removing those. Then to lift this motherboard out, um, if we needed to replace the whole motherboard then we would go start connecting all the different connectors but given that we don't need to replace the motherboard we probably want to make as little change as possible just to change the RAM and that is possible but unfortunately to lift it out although the USBs are not covered by plastic as you can see the headphone socket is so what we do is we just pull this back ever so slightly in order to be able to lift that up. And I don't have a great deal of leverage, uh, probably less than 45 degrees to play with there. Now if we turn this up, I don't know how well I'll be able to replace the RAM with the uh, camera in front of me. Uh, actually the one gig of RAM module that was in here has already been removed. Uh, that was the one gig module. Uh, they don't put a branded uh, make a RAM in here, but the chips themselves are Samsung chips. And we have the equivalent uh, 2 gig version. Same number of chips incidentally, which means that they're just higher density chips. Actually, uh, this is Kingston RAM going in here. So, uh, Kingston branded chips going in. And that needs to go right down at the bottom here. Uh, the key needs to be around that way. The key is the bit between the pins there. And there we are, the RAM is clipped in place. So, for obvious reasons, given that, that was fairly straightforward, we didn't want to have to remove all of the different connections here just to change the RAM, but that is quite a fiddly maneuver. Now we just want to line up the headphone socket and slide the board back in. So we'll fix back in. So we're we'll fixed back in the main PCB. Take one at the top corner. One there. One there. And finally one at the top here. Um, be extra careful with this connector. It's only really held in by a little bit of sticky tape. Sometimes that sticky tape can dry up, dry up. it's no longer sticky and this wire be can become very loose. That is the connection to the display uh, part of the, uh, of the screen. Uh, so if that comes loose, a little bit loose, you're going to see funny colours and a bit more loose, you're not going to see anything at all. So do check before you close up that that hasn't moved and that the connection seems flush to the terminal. Now we're going to put in the 64 gig module. Uh, sometimes there can be a lot of tape applied on different parts here to keep things in place when the workers are assembling these. Uh, this one did and actually we've already removed the tape. Uh, you may find it easier to remove or to leave there but it can sometimes be cumbersome to work around sticky tape. Uh, we'll leave it up to you how you handle that. It's uh, a standard SATA connection, so nothing too unfamiliar, but it does need to be lined up. There we go. And I think we just need to get the this cable out here, which is actually for the touch element of the screen, so you don't want to damage that cable either. Uh, this little switcher box, which is common in these tablets, there's never really enough room for them here. 
needs to sit just ever so slightly above the SSD. Uh, things are very cramped in there. Then we're going to fix back down the SSD. So there are two screws at the ends. These are the tiniest screws in the whole device. One, and the other one. So, there we have it. We've replaced the 16 gig SSD for a 64 gig SSD. We have installed a 3G PCIe Express uh, 3G modem there. We've changed the RAM for 2 gig and we've installed the 3G antenna. Uh, in the in the space there at the top. 3G antenna has to go there of course because the back is not going to be RF transparent, it's aluminium uh, but you have got the cubby hole, the, uh, but you have got the plastic there to allow the RF signal to get through. All that remains is to put the case back on. Uh, be fairly careful with all of this, these devices are not designed as business devices which means they can't really take a knock. There's no internal skeleton to these and all of the plastic posts that connect the uh, the back and the front are relatively weak. Uh, we often see these devices where people have tried to self-service and these plastic terminals just get broken and uh, it's all very well. You've got eight holes, you can usually lose a few uh, but you don't want to lose too many. So that just clips back into place. Even pressure, one push should get the whole job done. Then all you need to do is put back in the eight screws and for each screw cover again with the discrete little rubbers.